Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here for another day working on my very first rapier sword. Of course, we've been working on the Damascus steel. We've drawn it out into a little bit of flat stock. But, of course, this looks nothing like a rapier. It's about half as long as it needs to be, and about twice as thick, and it doesn't look very pointy to me. We've got some work to do. Thankfully, the forge is hot. The power hammer's running, so we can get straight to it. good progress on the blade. We've drawn it out, it's now got a nice taper to it, it's still very thick. It's about the width that we want, but I tried to go a little bit narrower. Now, I did this taking my time. You see, I didn't take too big a bite at a time. I took my time because I want an even, even manipulation of the pattern the whole way down. I want it to distort as it goes down to the tip, but we want it to be a continuous and even distortion, making it really look intentional as opposed to accidental. That's the hope. Knowing my luck and, uh, and my skill level, trying to do things intentionally is often difficult. <laughs> Speaking of things intentionally, what is this block of steel? Because you saw me break this down out of a four and a half pound, uh, four and a half pound piece of 1040 steel. Why do I have this and why is it hanging around here like a, like a new fancy earring? Well, I am going to make some dies to forge the edge Edges, which is something that I have been wanting to do since before I ever made a sword. I always wanted to make some dies to draw out the bevels. Now, why would we want to do that? We want to do that because one, it's fun, and two, it's a little bit of a representation of how if one was forging swords production style, you might end up better wanting to do it because hopefully by designing this right, we're going to be able to draw this thing through the dies and be much closer to the finished shape than we possibly could have been before. And so I spent some time in Fusion and I drew up, oh my goodness, it took a while. I drew up a little uh, little 3D design of what it is that we're gonna do to this square block of steel. And then we're gonna zip down the middle with the bandsaw. We're gonna weld in some pins and that's gonna be able to fit in the little uh, homemade die fixture that I have for the green power hammer to the left of the Pilkington so that we can run the piece through and forge the bevels. First things first, this thing is all gnarly and ugly. We need to make this nice and flat and square and even on all six sides. Okay, so here is our piece straight off the mill, pretty square. And I've been taking a tip from Joe Pizinski. Make sure you check out his YouTube channel. He uh, has a video about making, uh, making yourself an angle parallel using some trigonometry. And so we're gonna make our own little angle parallel here so that we can hold that piece at the right size. So I've got this set up here in the vise and I'm suddenly realizing I probably could have just made two of those parallels at the same time and it probably would have been a little bit better. Anyway, got some blue die come. We're gonna give it a little scribe with these old calipers. And I left myself a slight little gap there so that I can go right up onto the one scribe line and still see the scribe line from the other side. Ignore what I said about the scribe line. I'm just gonna find the center off the scribe line. We have to move over a certain amount. Had to do some more geometry there. Anyway, what I'm gonna do now, since I uh, didn't make two of those angled parallels, we're just gonna sweep, uh, sweep across this and make sure it's relatively flat. Oh yeah, it's bang on. <laughs> That's amazing. Right, here we go! I'm such an idiot! So stupid! 
Completely messed up my maths. Completely messed up the maths. Oh my goodness. Holy moly. Oh, I messed up so badly. Righty ho, let's flip it over. Hopefully we got enough material from the other side. Almost as if it never happened. Look at that. Thank goodness you can't see the underside. The issue was, last time, I was imagining I was going as deep as I want the blade thick. Now I'm properly going half the depth of the blade. Okay, so we got our first half done, but you see we've got a very steep edge here. We're just gonna soften that with a ball end mill. Now all we've got to do is loosen her up and flip her around the other way. And do it all over again. Oh yeah, that looks like half a sword. That looks like half a rapier to me. Right, we just got to drill some holes. We are so close to being able to forge the bevels here. I have cut off some bits of 16 millimeter round. Those will drop right in. This piece here, these also. These two definitely drop right in, nice and easy. When in doubt and all. I made sure that they're not bottoming out by uh, cutting some little bits of uh, one millimeter copper and throwing them in the bottom of the holes before we tap them down. And now we're gonna take the old uh, tiggly wiggly torch and uh, probably some of this 2.4 millimeter filler rod and we are gonna fill this up, fill this up, fill this up, fill this up. You'll also notice I've broken the edges on the dies. Did that on the belt grinder. I just took off the edges there on the dies so it's nice and, uh, nice and uh, soft so that as the steel comes in, we're not hopefully getting any little cracks forming or any little cold shuts. Right, so we finally got it welded up. I've ground off any excesses of the weld. We've got it installed here in the power hammer. It's time to give it a try on some mild steel. Okay, that was pretty difficult trying to keep that under control. I'm gonna need to do some practice. So one of the things that's been happening is we've been getting this flashing occur on the forging which is to be expected in drop forging. The flashing is completely normal and they just trim it off. Obviously, because we want to preserve the Damascus pattern of our rapier, we want to avoid any flashing if possible. So I'm heating up the other end. I'm gonna work out to what dimension it needs to be narrowed for the flashing to be very, very minimal. So I've made two different sizes. One is 23 by 10 and one is 20 by 9. We're gonna see if that helps us get any closer to reducing that flashing and getting a very nice and clean forging. I also found pushing in, it's very difficult to do because it takes such an aggressive bite. Our constant feed in is difficult. Instead, I'm gonna be working mostly on drawing through the dies, pulling back towards myself. We still got lots of flashing there. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Really minimal flashing. I mean, I was forging a lot more than I had to, and it's clean, really nice, consistent ridge to it. Beautiful. 
This has been so satisfying, of course. At this point, making dies and then drawing out the bevels using the dies to zero sum game. We're really not saving much time, but what we are doing is we're getting a very clean forging, and this is very exciting. I have learned a lot from the machining. It has been unbelievably fun making those dies, and unbelievably fun trying to work out how to get this thing beveled as accurately and as neatly as possible. I'm gonna end it here for today. So make sure that you come back in tomorrow because tomorrow indeed we're gonna be refining up this forging. This is gonna be the closest sword that I've ever forged to finish, which is gonna be very exciting because once that forging is finished off, it is into the grinding room. It is time to rough these bevels down, get rid of the scale, and get ready for heat treat. Thank you guys so much. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, at Alex Steele, for behind the scenes. Subscribe here if you're new, and if you're watching in the future, the next episode is right down there. Thank you.